All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kel. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 71, and today I will be presenting two extremely practical yet fascinating applications for methane gas, which I have proposed was being produced at the Steppe Pyramid Complex in Saqqara and distributed across ancient Egypt for domestic and industrial applications. After you get done watching this episode, check out my most recent podcast appearance, this time on Grimerica, featuring an absolute banger of a presentation. Thank you so much to Graham and Darren for having me on the show, and I will definitely remember to put a link in the video description below. If you haven't already, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button so that you do not miss the new videos when they premiere every single week. If you want to help support the channel, just go to thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a limited first edition print copy of the book, grab yourself some Land of Chem merch. Either way, all the orders mean the world to me. Thank you all so much for the support. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. And the first application I will be discussing today is something I have only briefly mentioned way back in episode 42, which is methane lamps. According to the conventional historical record, the use of natural gas for lighting dates back to 500 BCE with the ancient Chinese. But the knowledge of methane can be traced back to the Greek oracle at Delphi, which was built on a flaming natural gas seep around 1000 BCE, and the sacred, fire-worshipping religions of ancient Persia, now modern-day Iran, circa 2000 BCE. And here is a modern example of a revolutionary device that uses natural gas for lighting. And you can see here that this street lamp is connected into the sewer system, which is releasing natural gas into a conduit system or pipe that feeds the lamp and this is the type of infrastructure that I am proposing was being utilized by the ancient civilization that constructed the Egyptian pyramids. And here is another concept for a similar principle, harvesting natural gas or methane that is being produced by depositing manure into the base of the lamp, which begins to ferment, creating the methane that once again feeds the lamp. So now in our example, Let's just replace the dog manure with camel or cow manure, and we are taking the same concept back several thousand more years. And the ancient Chinese were using bamboo pipelines, which you can see here, to transport methane gas from the tapped natural gas deposits to various sites for numerous applications. And I am proposing that the ancient Egyptians were doing the exact same thing, but this time not with bamboo, but possibly with copper pipes. And here, the perfect example, the conduit system at Abu Sir that runs from the Valley Temple near the river up the causeway to the Eastern Temple that you can see here, and then branches out to feed this originally housed a copper piping system. And I vividly remember my first time at this site hearing the conventional explanation that these are ancient sewer and plumbing systems. Well, my question is, who all has taken a shit at the pyramid restrooms that they needed to construct this elaborate piping system for plumbing? The answer is no one, because these are not sewage pipes. What if perhaps these pipes were transporting methane gas to these temples, laboratories, and processing complexes, not for heating applications, but envision them being connected into devices like this that provided lighting for the entire temple complex? This is just one concept that I am proposing for the function of these conduits, and I have a lot more coming up on the Abu Sir complex, so please subscribe and stay tuned. All right, everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to help support the channel, just check out thelandofchem.com. I have brand new Land of Chem merch in a variety of colors and styles, and of course, limited first edition print copies of the book. The Land of Chem, an initiation into ancient chemistry through the degrees of the Egyptian, all available now at thelandofchem.com. So if you want to show some love, just check out the website. You can pick up some merch, grab yourself a copy of the book. Either way, all the orders mean more to me than words can possibly ever describe. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. 
All right, next up, the floating stones of ancient Egypt, which I first discussed back in episode 38, building the Great Pyramid with water. And there are numerous researchers that have all proposed similar ideas of how physics and fluid dynamics facilitated the construction process. And today, I'm just going to add to the theory one interesting detail. So the first version I presented came from researcher Chris Massey. And you can see here that he is proposing that the causeway systems were used to float stones directly to the construction site from the river using inflated animal bladders or wooden floats to provide the buoyancy and that temporary channels were constructed to raise the blocks up the side of the structures to their final destination. This idea is corroborated by the existence of these shaft that are located all across the Giza Plateau, which, if they were filled with water, would have functioned perfectly for delivering the stones to specific areas across the construction site. So today, let us take that idea and propose that instead of filling those bladders or pontoons with air, that they were instead filled with methane, making the floats exponentially more buoyant and able to float much heavier loads. And as you can see here, the density of air is reported at 1.27 or 1.22 kilograms per meters cubed, whereas the density of methane is only 0.7 or 0.42, depending on which resource you are looking at. But either way, methane is far lighter and less dense than air, making it an exceptional choice for increasing the buoyancy of your flotation devices. Now, that being said, there are some severe limitations and issues with that first theory from Chris Massey. Mainly, the impracticality of this temporary channel leading up the side of the pyramid. And I think a much more reasonable concept has been presented by Stephen Meyer, which implements a water lock system and wooden rafts for floating these stones into position. And sadly, there were a lot of people commenting that you cannot float stone using wood. And if you believe this to be true, then it is my great pleasure to introduce you to a few topics called the physics of water displacement and buoyancy. And let me give you a perfect, undeniable, real life example so that you can visualize this in your head. Let's say you take a flat, one by one piece of plywood and then float that in a pool of water. Now, start piling rocks on top of that piece of wood and see how many you can load on top of there before that wood starts to sink. You could put a brick on top of that piece of plywood sheet and it is not going anywhere. So now, extrapolate that to a 10 by 10 flat piece of wood and imagine how large of a brick you could float on top of that wood and then moving that brick across the surface of the water would be unbelievably easy. Boom. I truly hope the flash of illumination just went off in your head as you are now envisioning exactly what was being done by this ancient civilization. Also remember the great hermetic axiom, as above, so below, and it does not matter one bit whether you have the stone sitting on top or attached from below, it will still float. And in this example, we are just talking about a flat piece of wood not a raft that had been specifically designed to increase water displacement and thus increase buoyancy. Like this miraculous raft that you can see here, which is a raft or a float that is made of wood that was being utilized by the dynastic Egyptian civilization to transport stones. Just look here. They have not only one, but two obelisk loaded onto this wooden raft and there are depictions of similar barges doing this exact same thing all across Egypt. This is an inarguable fact that they not only had the capability of cutting and shaping stones, but also loading them onto rafts like this, floating them to the site, and then getting them into the final position. It does not require lost ancient high technology, anti-gravity, levitation nonsense. All it requires is the immense knowledge of physics and fluid dynamics that was clearly possessed by this ancient civilization. And these types of rafts or floats are well documented across the historical record. So you cannot say that these did not exist or that using wood to float stone is not possible. And this is also why all of the construction during the dynastic Egyptian period was done during the period of the Nile River flooding because the river water came right up to the temples and then the water channels and locks were used to transport the stones from the river directly to the site. 
So now, let's add some knowledge of chemistry into the mix and go back to our example of the flat piece of plywood. Say, for example, we now take some pontoons that were inflated with methane gas and attach them to the side of our flat piece of plywood. Okay, so now add one brick, not going anywhere. Add another brick, still floating, and so on. And once again, scale that up to a 10 by 10 raft or a 30 foot by 100 foot raft and just imagine the size of stone that could easily float on that wooden craft. No magic, no aliens, no levitation, just water, buoyancy, and physics. Now, let us also keep in mind that the methane does not have to be used directly. And most often in our modern day society, it isn't, but rather it is used as a sin gas for the production of hydrogen, which I hope you all know is the least dense and thus the most buoyant gas in the entire universe. So instead of using methane gas, you convert that methane into hydrogen and your flotation capabilities just increased exponentially. And of course, this syn gas conversion of methane into hydrogen should now have your attention and it will be applicable as related to some new structures that I will be discussing soon. So please subscribe and stay tuned. And now back to the most recent Doppler radar scans, which show the potential of existence of these water lock systems that still remain inside of the Great Pyramid that you can see here on the eastern and western sides in this diagram. So can you see these here, these vertically inclined shafts leading into the lock system? So the stones were loaded into the causeway as shown in the previous slides and then directed into a system of underground shafts, which you can see here, these stones being lifted by the buoyancy of their flotation devices moved up these shafts and into the lock system, which was then used to raise them into the inner courses of the construction. So whether it was gas floats or wood, methane or hydrogen, sitting on top or attached from below, it does not matter. But these stones were absolutely floated into place with the greatest of ease. Work smarter, not harder. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 71, Methane Lamps and Floating Stones. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And in the next episode, I will be presenting part one of a series explaining the ancient, esoteric, alchemical interpretation of some Egyptian deities. If you haven't already, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button so that you do not miss the new videos when they premiere every single week. The channel, just go to thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a limited first edition print copy of the book, grab some merch, Either way, all the orders mean the world to me. Thank you all so much for the support. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the land of chem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's episode. So I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to the land of chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now. <laughs>